Crypto Decrypted. So like we do every single Tuesday here on Cryptocurrent Live, we bring you an edition of Crypto Decrypted. And this week, we are breaking down what is next for cryptocurrency in 2022 and in the year ahead. But the big lesson that we want to really break down for you here first is that you cannot look forward without first looking to the past. So we're going to take a second here to run back 2021 for you and let you know from our expert opinion what we saw from the past year. What things do we need to learn from as we look ahead? So Richard, talk to me a little bit about the Sailor effect because that was clearly one of the bigger narratives at play throughout 2021 as Michael Saylor um, and MicroStrategy at large dollar cost average their way into what is to this day one of the largest Bitcoin holdings in the world. He basically proclaimed the future and said that, hey, Bitcoin's the future. I'm going to buy as much as I can and let the world catch up. And not only did he vocalize it, he did it and continues to dollar cost average buy and put it out there. And it, what it did is affirm for the first time this major institutional player who is saying like, huh, this is a legitimate thing. Maybe the rest of the world should pay attention. And it started a conversation. It got people, networks, all the big networks, et cetera, starting to talk about should people start considering Bitcoin as a legitimized um, investment? Um, and it got the ball rolling. And because he's continuing to double down and, and, and whatnot, it's encouraging a lot of other people to really consider it as an opportunity and something that they should be starting to get diversified into. Um, so that's that's been his big mass effect that he's, I mean, I, I give him a lot of credit for uh, a lot of the big money that's starting to look and get into this space. He was definitely a pioneer with getting that. Yeah. And look, I think that he's already made it known. He's looking at a million dollar Bitcoin in the 10, 20, 30 year horizon um, that we're looking on to now as we look into the 2020s and beyond. So it's really fascinating to me not to just say that like he bought a shitload of Bitcoin. And that's really cool. But to me, it's saying that, OK, this is now not only a vote of legitimization for the industry and for Bitcoin at large, but all of these other massive institutions have started buying Bitcoin. You had Tesla buying Bitcoin. You had some of the bigger banks starting to accumulate Bitcoin and Ethereum. That means that from here forward, a lot of the massive institutions and the governments that were against Bitcoin, they no longer can try and topple it because they would ultimately be damaging their own economies. So to me, I think that's a huge vote of confidence for Bitcoin going forward, something to be considering. The next big piece of last year's overall narrative was the inflation narrative. You couldn't miss it, right? You had the US um, government printing trillions of dollars and just injecting so much of their paper fake currency into our economy. 40% so, of all of the money that exists in the world was made in the last year. Yeah, think about that for a second. So as we go into 2022, there's an insane amount of cash out there. What ended up happening in 2021, we saw the beginning of massive shifts into crypto as a means of hedging against fiat currencies. That is going to continue into 2022 almost without a doubt. But we need to be mindful of that if we're going to start determining what comes next. So beside that, you also had Coinbase IPOing. First ever crypto company to actually IPO. Massive, massive validation for the industry. Huge vote of confidence, not just for the industry, but for a platform like, like Coinbase that is innovating on a regular basis for us and for the world. What do you think in terms of what we can learn from the Coinbase IPO? Coinbase got in early and they played the long game. I believe they started in either uh, 14 or 15, and they saw this as the play to be the onboarding ramp for most people into this space. And they knew that if they could just chip away, slowly get it like first, you can only get on and get Bitcoin, then Ethereum, then like four coins. And now like they have a ton that you can go and get on there and they're, they're absolutely crushing it. And it's because they had the mindset of how do we make it very easy for users to onboard um, and be the, the trusted place to do it. And they basically put their stamp on that. They IPO'd and they're crushing it. Yep. I think the thing that we have to be keeping in mind as we look forward, though, is that accessibility is synonymous with Coinbase now because you have upwards of 75 different tokens right now that have been listed on Coinbase throughout the last year. Guess what? This is only the beginning. 
we're going to see more and more tokens be added, but that means that more than ever, you as an investor, you as a member of our crypto family here at the Cryptocurrent Crew need to be doing your diligence. You need to be doing your research so that you're not just investing blindly into the next token that Coinbase launches in the hope and the dream of getting the Coinbase pump. You are not going to get it every single time. Some of these coins eventually are going to just be seen as a big old dream that ends up turning into a big old bust. So keep that in mind. Really important to be um, keeping perspective. The last thing I'll say about it is this. With a company like Coinbase being so iconic in the space of this immediate moment in our history, as we're writing the history book of crypto, you need to always be staying on top of what they're doing. We heard about Coinbase lending last year. Coinbase learn. Coinbase earn. But you also have something forthcoming right now in Coinbase NFT. Okay, That NFT platform is set to launch in the next quarter. So keep that in mind. It's going to be the absolute biggest possible gateway for mainstream America and the world to enter into the NFT world. That's coming. It's coming soon. Wall Street bets and meme coin moves. That's got to be the next thing we talk about here, right? When we're looking back at 2021, Wall Street bets had a massive, massive hold on our attention as we were in quarantine and in lockdowns. And basically, it was them coming together to buy meme stocks. Well, that transitioned very quickly once you know our government decided to say, no, you're going to invest the way that we want you to invest. They then started shifting a lot of that attention over to meme coins. And that's why you saw, saw the meme coin rush mid-year. Anything to add on that before we carry forward? Two meme coins in the crypto space that took off this year, Dogecoin. I mean, I knew that that was going to be something when it was the Super Bowl last year and everyone, all my friends were asking me about crypto and do you have Dogecoin? I was like, goodness gracious, here we go. And then, of course, Shiba, which the greatest potential investment of all time, a guy that put in eight grand, and turned it into a what a couple billion yeah i think it was five yeah meme coins so must be nice must be nice i was gonna say that it, at some point is gonna end up becoming like the actual catchphrase of our channel must be nice but <laughs> the thing to also remember is that like with these meme coins came all of the trolls of society none bigger than elon musk right you had elon musk coming up and basically saying not only that he was all about crypto and you could have early on in the year buy a tesla with bitcoin and that they bought a billion dollars of bitcoin but then he turned it on its head and said we're not going to accept bitcoin and then i love dogecoin right that was a massive catalyst remember the trolls will always be out there they're always going to be a catalyst if you start seeing more and more of that happen in the news you need to be aware of it and you need to be able to navigate it more carefully the bigger story of 2021 in my opinion was non-fungibles taking crypto mainstream, okay? Massive deal here. There were studies that were released later in the year last year that all indicated that non-fungible tokens not only are here, but they're here to stay. Why? Because more people are willing to enter the crypto space via NFTs than they are via traditional mechanisms like Bitcoin investing, Ethereum investing, all of the blue chip cryptos that we talk about on this channel frequently. They want NFTs because they can relate to them. They are seen as popular. They're seen as collectibles. So that, to me, is the biggest trend out of last year. And I think we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg on that. What do you think? No, it's just, like I said, it's the beginning. Uh, more and more people are paying attention. I remember there was a month where I was legitimately getting blown up by friends, friends of friends, family. Not asking me about crypto, asking me about what is an NFT and how do I build one and how can I get one? Like, yeah, I've had a lot of people have come and asked me about like crypto, but like the moment when everyone was exploding my timeline in conversations with purely NFTs, I knew that this was that mainstream moment of market adoption of people really paying attention to crypto, which is again, going back to the Coinbase NFT that's coming out soon why i think it's going to be really huge for a lot of people to be able to get into it because right, right now there's still the biggest barrier to get into it is it, it's it's a pretty challenging thing to get into you have to be a little bit tech savvy to, to to get into it coinbase is going to make it dead easy here's your wallet here's your address buy this thing you're done yep and it only gets crazier from there because as this started to reach a fever pitch you had folks like facebook 
or as they're now known, Meta, jumping in and saying, we're going to start building the Metaverse. So Metaverse starts being pushed right into the forefront of our cultural zeitgeist. It's an incredible moment when we're starting to see this all of a sudden thrown in front of us when all of us in the crypto space, we were theorizing that we were 5, 10, 15 years away from Metaverse. Now it's in front of us. It's being accelerated. It could be here sooner than you actually think. To me, that all starts with crypto gaming and blockchain gaming. We're going to start to see that narrative develop here in the next year. We already saw a little bit of it at the end of this of this past year, but it's in that lesson that we can start looking ahead. Um, I want to push us forward real quick, Rich, and this is to a topic we've spoken about a ton here, and that is Ethereum gas getting out of hand. That happened at a number of different points throughout last year. You saw 250, 1,000 um, guay being hit throughout the year. That then caused all of these ecosystems to start being pushed to the forefront. You saw the ETH killer narrative emerge again. You saw all the scaling solutions, whether it's optimistic rollups, ZK rollups, which we're going to talk about more in a bit. There is a very, very big narrative you can pull out of that for 2022 and beyond. It says if Ethereum does not get its shit under control, the ETH killers will win and the scaling solutions will take over. So what else do you learn from that massive lesson that was last year? Just what you said, ETH has to get it figured out. Uh, anywhere that you go to in the world and you say like, hey, I need 10 bucks. Okay, that'll be $100. Or okay, that'll be 150 bucks. You, you would never go for that. But somehow crypto is allowing that to happen aka the ethereum ecosystem so if e2.0 needs to get this figured out after after using things like solana polygon on top of ethereum and other places avalanche where things cost pennies to be able to do transactions you don't have to make financial decisions in your head of how bad do i really want this token or coin or do i want to trade out like you really make financial decisions that you shouldn't be having to make to do simple transactions and that's a crime Yep, and I would almost entirely agree with you. The one thing that I will play to the counter as a lesson from all of this is that if you want to talk about true user, not user, sorry, um, degree of usability, right? The only way that ETH gas runs up basis the current model of Ethereum is if the network is being used. So that is to say, in the short term, the network is going to continue to be used and likely gas is going to suffer for that. And a lot of the ecosystem and the members who want to participate are going to suffer for that. But if Ethereum 2.0 comes along in 2022, the way that it's currently scheduled to, we could start to see that narrative balance out. Um, so just something to be thinking about. The last of our two points on 2021 in reflection is this idea of holiday stagnation. We thought really, really hard about this at the end of the year. And we thought to ourselves, is it going to be the blow off top that we all think is going to come that has traditionally come right in this window? Well, the answer to that question we found out was no. In fact, no. the market started trading sideways. People started getting bored and people started investing a crap load of money into Wonderland time because they got bored, right? No, because Wonderland time is a phenomenal project and we will continue to be putting money into Wonderland time as long as the APY remains above a million. So my question is, <laughs> why did that holiday stagnation happen, right? Richard, was it talk tax loss harvesting? You know, it's a mixture of both. It's tax loss harvesting and people taking profits. You got to think about the bull cycle started like last October. So and it, and it went hot until like April, then it flatlined, then it picked back up. Just uh, for the record, the you're, you're talking 2020, right? Just want to make I'm talking sure 2020. I'm talking 2020. Bull cycle starts around October, goes strong until April of 2021. You see it correct. You see it pick back up, going all the way into Thanksgiving. And people are like, this might be a good time to take some profit. I don't blame them. So, like, I think it's people taking profit, people sitting on cash, trying to see if, like, hey, is this going to keep going down? Is it I'm going to buy back in? Or is it going to start going back up? And, like, I think they're looking at this kind of the same thresholds 
that a lot of other traders are looking at. Like if it goes a little above this level of support, it's probably going to keep going. So I should probably buy back in. If it goes below this level of, su of support or resistance, um, I'm going to just wait and see how far down it goes. And I'm buying as much as humanly possible because I'm sitting on cash. Exactly. So it can be either of these two narratives. It can be both at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive. But the thing that you brought up there that's really interesting to me is that we do actually need to look back at 2020 a little bit further because there was actually a moment in 2020 that really sparked it, right? And that was DeFi summer. So that was just before October of 2020, how that trend and that narrative really ramped up and sent us into what ended up being a six-month absolute bull push. So a lot of people are saying microcycles are a thing now. That's where the microcycle theory originates. It's that we're having these two to three month massive pushes in specific narratives, and that has been what we've seen since. So to me, I think that's a huge thing to consider into the future as well. But the last piece of this looking into the past um, to then look at the future is what projects we're building versus what projects we're talking a big game. Now, Richard, you said something really important to me at the beginning of this podcast, and that was that basically all of these projects that talked a big game yeah, they succeeded in the short term, but realistically, they're going to fade into the black. So tell me a little bit more about your logic on that and why we need to probably be considering the projects that we're building quietly. So projects that like either had a product or were hoping that like, hey, this, this thing is coming. Trust me. Look at this thing. It's really cool. And I really good market team and created this hype. People got behind it because there's money was flowing in and, and the hype trains were coming just kind of like similar to what we saw in 2017 uh 2018 uh bull cycle that happened but again if you look at a lot of these companies who have done pretty well they were the quiet ones at the, on the same token the companies that were quiet from 2018 19 20 and then like all of a sudden just surfaced to the, the forefront, right? Like your, your Solanas and, and, and like Terra Luna and some of these other ones that were just kind of like building, 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 and then boom, they're ready. It's the quiet ones you have to look out for. So even at the beginning of this year, there have been a lot of projects that have been building since like 2019, 2020, and have just been putting their head down, not really marketing, just trying to have a product. And so as we go into this next year, as they start to emerge, those are going to be the ones you probably want to pay more attention to as opposed to some of these companies who have launched either successfully, kind of did okay, whatever, but now like they don't really, they're leaving up to, living up to what they said or they're, they're not. And so there's not a lot of hype behind them anymore. It's like, does your product work or does it not? And if it doesn't, you might see those kind of fade into the dark. You might see those start the less uh, headline news and you start to see some of these other ones who have just been quiet and now are ready for their moment and they start come out to the forefront. So definitely keep an eye out on some of these projects that have been these sleeping giants. So like one for me um, is Cosmos. You you have not seen a whole lot of, 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 of speaking about Cosmos, but it is a sleeping giant about to emerge. You heard it here first. Yep. And you're going to hear more about it in a second because that's exactly what we're getting into. And the big lesson here is if you're building quietly, do not, do not ever think that you are to be underestimated. A lot of that's going to be coming up in the next year. So this brings us to staying ahead of the trend. You can only be ahead of the trend if you have learned from the mistakes and you've learned from what you have experienced. So we have to answer the question first, post-harvesting, where is the money flow now? Okay, we saw stagnation at the end of 2021 now that we are into the new year, all that money that was te technically sitting on the sidelines is moving. But where is it moving to? And Richard, I wonder if you're seeing anything that I'm not seeing because the one thing that I'm noticing most is that money is flowing very, very quickly into NFTs. Yep. So is that what you're seeing or are you seeing some other stuff? I'm seeing it go into three areas. Um, gaming right now because it's the buzzword and it's what everyone's excited about. And it's the big home run hit that like if you get in the right place you could turn your small amount of money into a large amount of money or a large amount of money into an ungodly amount of money that's number one number two is then nfts just the the, the flow that's in the attention that's coming back to this and people getting prepared for an easier onboard ramp through again the coinbase nft that's coming um coinbase nft platform and then finally i see it going back into DeFi. so there's a lot of like people are trying to hedge in the crypto space and they're trying to figure out like okay well how do i diversify protect my downside and also be accumulating some some 
um, passive income while all this is happening. And they're looking at these different DeFi protocols. You know, you have some really good ones that are out there with high APYs and people are really start like, if you look at some of these different APY plays that are out there and look at just the last month and just see how much it's increased as far as how much money they have on there. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty impressive. So that's where I'm kind of seeing three flows of money. How about you? So again, that's the short term though, right? We're starting to see this happen now. That means that if we're going to follow micro cycle, cycle, micro cycle theory, I don't know how to speak English today. If we're going to follow that thought process, or we're going to say that it's going to go until mid year. In either case, that's going to be a short term narrative. To me, again, as I said, I believe that the NFT craze is coming back. I do believe that the money is flowing back in NFTs. I'm seeing it very consistently right now. In fact, we're right now under the impression that OpenSea is going to break its August high. If you don't remember, OpenSea broke a trillion dollars in volume. Trillion dollars in volume. With a like, T. Cannot say that enough. If they're going to beat those highs, that means it's going to be a massive, massive month. So be thinking about that. Um, I, I happen to agree with you. I think that we're starting to see money trickle into gaming, but... It goes back to the question we asked at the end of 2021's page when we're talking about, okay, what's talking a big game versus what's real, what's been yep. developing, right? The big game that I keep hearing a ton about in terms of the fact that it is real, twofold, big time and alluvium. Those two games, they're material, they're there, they're triple A quality. Everything else, if you're just seeing a trailer, that's not proof. If you're seeing half of that stuff, you can go out and buy footage that has been like touched on and made into a trailer of what you envision this game to look like if you're on the creative team, but that does not mean it's proof. So I want to know that the team is developing a game if it's actually going to bring a game to market this year or how far off they are and what novel things are doing if I'm going to put money into that. But that's a trend that is going to be here this year, almost undoubtedly. So on the next piece that you have to evaluate to stay ahead of the trend is this idea from the traditional finance world of oversold versus overbought. Richard, at the end of this past year, you probably remember two coins in particular that are on different sides of the coin here. You have Cardano and you have Matic. Okay. End of this past year, Matic was very clearly already in oversold territory. What happened? All of a sudden, we started seeing it rip because they, people had already taken their profits and they were ready to roll it in Yep. And start riding it up because they knew the beginning of this year was going to start hot. So Matic is already starting to drive. Cardano, Cardano got smacked from like what? I think it was September on down. Yep. And went from three bucks down to 120 at one point. Yep. Right now, and I've heard a number of different experts say this, myself included, because I am an expert in Cardano in particular. It is so oversold, it's not even fair. Okay. At this stage of the game, that is at a hot buy point for me. I would absolutely be looking at it. But you have to look at the charts from that perspective. If it's oversold, it means that you likely have an opportunity upcoming. If you're seeing it's overbought and you hold a bag, right now might be the time to start taking profits, right? Yep. Well, absolutely. And you know, looking at things that might be um, overbought as you like we're looking in the market, um, I would venture to say one of the ones that I was looking at that got really hot towards the end of the year was a uh, Kadena got away up to like twenty some dollars went on an absolute tear. And like, it was very clear, like, you know, it wasn't finding support where it was. And so um, as you've kind of seen, like it's start to cool off, talk about a little, a little bit more later. Um, but the projects that you have seen that were over, are finding these opportunities that's like you know this price seems a little high it seems like it, it, it might come to to take some profit and see where it goes um you know another one from i was looking at was solana um i thought that you know towards the end of the last year you know got up to 200 and some dollars uh again it, it went on absolute tell you could have got it at the beginning of the year for, for around like 10 bucks you know 20x like it's probably gonna have to settle down a little bit it's probably a little bit overbought uh, take some profits, see where it's going to land, and then get another bag because it's going to keep going, man. I, I think Solana is another one that can continue to flourish. Well, look, 
time will tell, but this is the guidance that we're giving you. Make sure that you're looking at the chart and determine, is it oversold? Is it overbought? Is it middling? Because oftentimes, these need to be the things that guide your decisions. If they're middling for too long, it means that likely the attention is not on them enough. Or the attention is not coming back to them because they're just stagnating. So worth keeping in mind. Now, based on what we learned from last year, we can also start to see that there are certain narratives that are popping up and that are going to be present in the next year. We've identified five, and we're not going to tell you exactly what to be looking at because we are not going to give you exact picks just yet. But these are the five things that we're starting to look at here and we're starting to consider as really legitimate narratives for 2022. First of which comes right in line with what we were talking about with Ethereum earlier, and that's efficient smart contract platforms. If ETH 2.0 hits it, great. Ethereum is going to continue to run and it's going to run through every wall in front of it until there are no walls left. And you think that we've talked about the Bitcoin flipping enough? That's gone if Ethereum 2.0 launches. That's my personal take on it. But there are other pl big smart contract platforms out there that can succeed whether Ethereum runs or if it doesn't. So Richard, do you think that this is a 50% chance, is this a 70% chance, or is this a 100% chance that we're going to see efficient smart contract platforms run in the next year? I'm putting it at 70. It's just, it's essential to the market that like these keep evolving. So I'm putting it at 70. I'm going to bet you right now it's at 90. The only reason I'm not putting it higher is because I think there's a 10% chance that this market is actually going down. You cannot definitively say that is going up 100% or it's going down 100%. You can only say that there are chances of both. So to me, if we're going to run, I think that's going to be here. The next big narrative is NFTs, gaming, and the metaverse. So what do you think on this one? We've said it 90. enough. We've talked NFTs. We've talked gaming. We've talked about how meta's coming in. You think 90%? 90. 90%. 90. That's I, that's it. This is going to be its year, I think. Look, I think that's super bullish. I don't disagree. I think that we've already gotten this narrative that it's going to happen. And if the powers that be have willed it, pretty inevitable. I mean, if Facebook is going to be, you know, flexing their financial muscle in the space, it's hard to imagine that it's not going to continue. Same thing with projects that are much larger. And I say projects, I mean companies like Roblox, right? they're already a big centralized player in the metaverse space. So when I think about this one, I think it's a non sequitur. I think this one is happening even if the market goes down. Now, that's contradictory, right? You'd think if the markets can go down, Rich, like we're all screwed, right? It's all dropping to zero. I think that even if it does, people are still going to want a game. People are still going to want to collect stuff. People are still going to want to build in the metaverse. I think all of them are going to succeed um, depending on how real the development is. Next one's yeah. really interesting, right? Next one's airdrops. So airdrops for early users. We talked about it at the end of last year, how you had platforms like DYDX, Uniswap, um, even ENS, who airdrop tokens to early users of their platforms. This to me is a no-brainer as we started seeing things really ramp up at the end of last year with GasDAO, Open DAO, DAO to DAO, DAO, DAO. They're all dropping tokens. My question to you is not, is it going to happen? But which drops do you think are coming? So of all the big time players in the space that are out there, let's call it the top 100 cryptos that are out there, if they haven't already done some sort of airdrop, I'd probably say 30% are going to do an airdrop. I don't think we see a majority of them doing airdrops. It's expensive. It's an expensive undertaking. It's a very logistical thing. It's awesome. It brings a lot of value, but like it's a huge undertaking that I think most companies don't want to take on. And see, I would I would have to agree with you. I think that not all of them want to take it on. I think that because they know that decentralization is in front of them, they want to get in front of it now. I think we're going to see 50%. The reason okay. I say that is because there are two that I think are going to really pave the way. You have ZK Sync which is going to be one of the leading um, providers for ZK rollups. And you have all but confirmation from the from the group themselves because their parent 
basically gave confirmation that it's going to come is a MetaMask token. So to me, I say go make a deposit on ZK Sync, start a ZK Sync wallet. They will be airdropping at some point this year, almost guaranteed. And MetaMask, make sure you've used their in-wallet exchange at least one time because that is probably going to be the thing that drives how they disperse their token. Just important to keep in mind. Now, Richard, we talked about the end of 2020 where we saw in September time DeFi 1.0 and DeFi summer. The big trend that we have to contend is going to come this year because it hardly came along last year was DeFi 2.0. So that, of course, is DeFi on Terra, Avalanche, Cosmos, all the other networks, and then the evolution of DeFi on Ethereum. How likely do you think that is for the next year? 95. I think almost if you're like in crypto and you have like an ounce of like what DeFi is, and like how you can participate, I'd, I would venture to say you're going to try to do it at least in one capacity or another because there's no reason you shouldn't be trying. So I'm, I'm going with 95%. Yeah, I think that you're probably spot on there. I'll play a little bit lower than you on that at about 85, only because I think that there is a chance that if the market does falter, that DeFi is not going to garner any amount of attention. It's going to fall with the rest of it. I don't think it's one of those ones that can f actually do something contradictory to the, what's the, the current market trend. Now, the last one actually does fall a lot in line with airdrops, right? A lot of these airdrop tokens are being used for governance. But more specifically, the trend of DAO governance, right? And DAOs can be used for a number of different things. So please do not hear what I'm not saying. DAO governance and utilizing that model to govern an organization is going to be a massive trend this year. I think that this is another trend that is pretty much not baked in. It's not, it's not like it's in the algorithm that simulation is 100% going to push DAO governance forward, right? It's that... Whether we go up or we go down, this is a model that can't be ignored anymore. A lot of people are adopting it. Whether you're an NFT project like Illuminati, who you're going to hear more about in our Friday interview, please make sure you subscribe and are following so you can hear that. If you're paying attention to that type of stuff and you're listening to these narratives, you're going to understand really quickly why DAO governance makes sense instead of just a couple of central figures making all the decisions. You don't need a market to go up or down to influence whether or not that's going to develop. It's part of the public discourse at this point. So my question to you is on what are your thoughts on DAOs at large, but also how likely do you think it is that we start, we start to see this movement turn into a real narrative this year? Because it's so new and because a lot of people are still figuring out and are kind of keeping it at arm's distance, I'm going to put it at 40%. I think it's the future. Matter of fact, I'm pretty confident it is the future. And it will stick up more steam. But as far as like a new concept goes, it, it, it's I don't even know that it's a year old yet. Like it's it's very new. And it's a concept that a lot of people are taking a lot of keen interest in and will continue to develop. But I don't necessarily think most new companies are going to like use it. They're not going to use it. They're going to just sit back and watch and see what's going on. And then eventually more people start taking on. I think DAOs are going to be a huge thing come 2023, 2024. I think it needs another two, three years. So I'm going to go with, I'm, I said 40, I'm going to say with 30%. Okay. I'll give you this. I think that it's probably a 50. Um, you can literally coin flip that one. Now, I would pay attention to all of these narratives that we've already mentioned and then ask yourself on top of that, okay, if a DAO is forming... Does it touch one of those narratives? That's what's going to fluctuate that 50 up or down. That's my personal take on it. Because if it's NFT tied and it's a DAO that is tied to the success of an NFT platform or a project, that DAO has a high likelihood of succeeding if the trend in NFTs is going to pop off. If you're going to see a DAO that's tied to finance, if finance is a 75% going to happen versus a 50 then the DAO itself may have more uh, momentum behind it if that number's higher. So big things to be thinking about. But the final message we want to leave you with is this. In this space, if you've learned anything from the last year, it's that narratives shift fast. So you need to be paying attention to how the market is attending to them. If attention is waning away from NFTs, 
you need to be asking yourself, okay, what comes next? Where is the attention moving to now? Be aware of crypto Twitter. Be aware of Discord channels for alpha groups. All of these things exist and you need to be taking advantage of them. But if you really want to make sure that you're on top of where the attention is at in the space and what narratives are happening right now, there is nothing you can do better than subscribing to Cryptocurrent and making sure that you follow our content here because we've got content every single day of the week that we're pumping out that is not just current, but it is exciting, it is accurate, and it is brought to you from the experts in this space. That is going to rip, wrap up Crypto Decrypted for us this week. If you enjoyed this segment in our reflection on 2021 and our look into what's next in 2022, please let us know in the comments. Please make sure that you're following us on your favorite podcast platform so that you can see every single episode that we drop. Otherwise, Rich, I think there's only one thing left to do, and that's run into a little bit of blockchain bets.